Pat Moorhead, and we are live at MongoDB Local here in New York City 2023. And as you can tell by the background and the energy, it is happening here. Daniel, how are you, my friend? Yeah, it's been a great day here in New York. Um, got to hear from the leadership of MongoDB this morning, and it was a mix of kind of overall updates, a reminder that the company loves its developers, right. but that it's also attached really well to all the secular trends, especially AI. Yeah, and I, I really loved the simplicity element of it as well. As you know, as enterprise gets tool after tool after tool that needs to be integrated, that's true for security and that's also true for data and databases. But without further ado, let's introduce our guest, Nico from Globit. How are you? Thanks for having me here. It's a Absolutely. pleasure to be with you. Absolutely. Yeah, great to have you here, uh, Nico. I think a good place to start, you know, you heard me say AI. Look, I think we all get a little fatigued because these trends come and then all of a sudden it's like all those other things you were it's talking exactly about. exactly what we were talking about in the green room. Yeah, yeah. And all these other things are no longer yeah. relevant. But I would also say there's trends that kind of maybe get some hype unnecessarily, you know, like the metaverse. And then there's trends that are very real. And I think we can all agree this one is very real. I'm sure at Globin, you being, you know, CTO, you're under a lot of... Uh, you know, I'd say pressure, but also there's a lot of interest to say, how are we supposed to be implementing AI across our business to deliver yeah. for our employees, for our customers? Talk a little bit about that and how you as CTO are thinking about and implementing AI in the enterprise today. Sure, and uh, I, it's uh, great to be talking about AI because for a second I thought that we were going to be speaking about spatial computing, right? <laughs> no, no, so that was much. last year. <laughs> It's amazing how these new trends keep coming at, at, at us at a rapid pace. And I can understand, I, we meet with CTOs and CDOs and CIOs from different companies uh, every, every day. And uh, they're under so much pressure, right? Um, so I think that the, the, the bright side of this trend on AI is that we had a wave of AI six years ago, right? For us, we kept the pressure on AI since uh, since the last time that we really put a, a strong focus, and uh, we because we're in the business of helping companies transform themselves through technology yeah. and find better versions of themselves, operating more efficiently, what we realized is that we needed to focus on ourselves, and we started using AI, and particularly generative AI, to create products internally that will help us run our process faster, help our developers code faster, learn about the code base, code base faster. So for us, when this came to life, um, we, we had kind of hit the ground running in that sense. But it was impressive uh, how it brought it to everybody's attention, right? Uh, I think there is a practicality test yeah. that it passed today. Everybody can go and do a test. Everybody can do go and and, and try to imagine the kind of problems that they can solve. And um, so I think in this sense, this new wave is a lot easier to tackle than the past. Now, uh, I think that we're getting to a second, uh, a second level of complexity. I think everybody saw the first couple of things that you could do with generative AI. Right. And when they're really starting to rethink their business processes, uh, in compare with the edge cases, with the complexities and limitations, you really start to divert the things that are easy to implement and right. the things that are going to be taking a little bit more time. So it's great, you know, and it's interesting to see how a lot of companies are looking at generative AI. I mean, there's there's the pioneers, right? And then the other extreme, there's the laggards mm -hmm. who are going to wait years and years and years, maybe to their peril. But it's good to see that Globin got to jump on this uh, early, so your learning curve has to be a little bit shorter. So you have a lot of different offerings, and I'm curious, I want to do the double click. What are some of the new capabilities uh, you're adding to your studio offering? Building capabilities is the most important thing, right? Building the capabilities and bringing them together is really relevant. So we have capabilities on data and AI for over 10 years. Right. Um, what we saw in the last couple of years is that we needed to uh, to rally these technical capabilities about different industries. 
and about different specialties. Okay. Like for example, a couple of years ago, we launched what we call the digital, the reinvention studios. Those are focused on industries and they're looking at how AI can go and fix a particular problem on the life sciences space. So these are the like co-creation type of studio, a co-creation platform? Yeah, a, a studio is a group of people that have an expertise in common, that okay. they specialize in that. Right? A center so, of expertise or exactly. a center of excellence. And they're not an office, they're people that are scattered around the world. And they're really important in attracting and creating the talent. I actually joined the company to be the best mobile engineer that I could be. And I joined the mobile studio. Yeah. And I was able to work with the folks that were working in the companies the likes of Disney or uh, like leaders in, in the industry. Yes. And learn from the best in that sense. So, what we added was a layer of, of specialization through the reinvention studios that basically land those technologies into a particular offering of an industry. So for instance, now we're talking about generative AI and we're talking about using it for, in, in general, you can think like, I don't know, optimizing email campaigns and creating copy right. faster so you can have more answers to, to clients. When you start thinking outside of the box and you go into, um, re-envisioning an experience you think of a of a buying experience right you're thinking of retail right how do i go on e-commerce and try to filter filters are the anti-generative ai experience right you go yes. search for a green bottle open a filters and start clicking on, on options that's not how you choose something in real life right so now we have an alternative to rethink that experience when you're shopping uh, for a vacation you're not going and choosing I'm going to choose this port and go take this cruise for many days. You're actually exploring and saying, I want to take a five days that off that are valid for me and my wife. Yeah, so people have different sh ways to shop and different ways to get maybe to the same place, but they're just coming at it from a different angle. And you have to provide the intelligence to be able to handle that. Yeah, and it's, it's actually bringing the expertise on the technology right. with the understanding of the, the art of the possible in the industries and the problems that the people are having. And I think uh, we're here on, on, on Mongo's event today, and I think it's, it's a really good example of how some of the building blocks can really help you fill that gap, right? There, there, there is so much that technology leaders have to do Yes. catching up with the, the demands of the business. It's moving faster. Uh, everybody's trying to be cost conscious. So the building blocks that help you get it done faster, Yes, uh, it's really what uh, allows an organization, a technology organization, to be a superpower for their, for their company. I love it, like a force multiplier. Yeah. So it's interesting as you, as you talk about creating these new experiences, there's a couple of technological trends. And the first, of course, is you know, the whole generative AI, open AI has become a bit table stakes. Every company has access to these same large language models and everybody's parsing the same internet of data. So then we've kind of quickly come to the realization that enterprises need to find a way to utilize their proprietary data. You heard a little bit here today about search, uh, vector, you know, of course, taking all that unstructured data that's unique to either your customers, your processes, finding a way to build them into your applications to make them smarter, um, to help get to answers more quickly, like you said. So that's a, that seems to be a, a, a lot of the trend line right now. But, you know, as I said in the beginning of the show, it's not all just about this Gen AI trend. These enterprise tech trends are, it's more horizontal. It's bringing things together, ambient edge data. It's the multi-cloud. It's the, what are some of the, uh, you know, trends and technology and emerging trends that you're kind of continuing to watch uh, as we head into the second half of the year? You know, I think that even though the market is a lot more forward looking today, um, there is a trend in the last couple of months, the last couple of years, I'd say about creating efficiencies, right? And uh, that, is, that is an environmental condition that you can avoid, like being efficient in how you organize your, your technology teams, that really brought a lot of attention to the fact that even though there are some trends that are undeniable, I actually think that metaverse is going to be a thing on the on the on the long run. What's ready today? What right. do I need to do today? And even though many companies want to do a stronger focus on generative AI to change the experience, maybe overhauling processes is a, a is a a baseline. And there are so much legacy code 
that is becoming um, that is becoming a showstopper for that progress. Yeah. That as leaders are thinking, where do they go? That becomes the the baseline of what they need to cover. So there is a lot of attention on going back to basics, on creating the right uh, decisions to be cost effective, on the selection of tools, to to choosing to tools that are going to be able, uh, able to scale with the organization and that can support the modernization. Right? And I think in that, in that sense, the, the announcement of the, um, the, the migration tool today is really important because companies are in, in need of how do I right. move from my legacy code to a new platform in a faster, following best practices and what else. Yeah, I, I loved your efficiency statement and sometimes with all the fireworks that go off and digital transformation, the ability to change business models is super important, but you also have to look at cost and efficiency too. And that's why I love seeing hybrid multi-cloud fabrics that work on-prem, you know, your favorite um, CSPs and also on the edge. And we're seeing the security market and the observability market also uh, enterprises are tired of, of having 27 different tools that they have to integrate. So I'm really, really glad to hear you say that. So one of the biggest topics, and this is nothing new that comes with new technology, is talent, right? You ask somebody, hey, what's one of your biggest inhibitors? It's, I can't find enough of the right people to do what I need to do. How does Globant keep up uh, upskilling, reskilling? What's your strategy because your customers rely on you to be cutting edge and obviously everything else. But but how do you do that? How do you keep your talent flow going uh, with the best and brightest? We have certain particularities that applies to us, may not apply to everybody else because if we are as much a software development company as we are a talent development company. Right. right? And actually we did most of our marketing historically we've done around attracting developers, attracting talent, because we knew that yeah. if we had the right talent, we were going to be able to succeed in that. But at the same time, that's where the studios became a really important aspect. Right. That is creates a sense of community and a high bar. Um, and uh, we've created a whole ecosystem of training tools and understanding an engineer 360. Yeah. You're not a Java mid-level, you're actually, you got 50 of the 120 skills in Java, but you might have 10 of the 50 relevant on GCP, right? So right. like fairly complex systems to understand what people need to do to improve. We create a lot of, a lot of training, but actually creating the spaces for specialization is really important. That's why, for instance, or uh, we launched our GCP studio a couple of, of months ago. And right. those are some aspects. We have similar niche technology, but on MongoDB we have a strong alliance as well to make sure that we are training we're providing feedback on the things that we think that can improve on the technology right. and that are paying for our customers. And on the flip side, make sure that we're getting the best guidance and we have the best expertise to provide the best You know, the skills gap will continue to be one of the most yeah. talked about challenges inside of every enterprise. And you're, marry you're marrying that to the efficiency equation yeah. where companies know that their people are paramount to the company's success. But having said that, that question of, do we need all the people? Where are those processes that can be layered on top? If you remember the people process technology thing, we're actually seeing these things converge. Generative is actually converging people process technology into one fluid motion that enables customers to have an interaction that feels very human, whether it is or isn't right. with the human. Right. I think it's really great, Nico, to hear from you about this. I'd, Love to talk a little bit more. We're out of time right now, but it's it's great that you took the time to sit down with us here on the 6.5. Here, thanks for your time. Thanks. All right, everybody, stay tuned. We have many more conversations here at MongoDB Local in New York City, 2023. I do appreciate you all tuning in. More to come. Pat, we'll see everybody soon.